welcome to this presentation today we are going to see about the transport layer the transport layer is responsible for process to process delivery of the entire message a process is an application program running on a host whereas the network layer oversees source to destination delivery of individual packets it doesn't recognize any relationship between those packets it treats each one independently as though each piece belong to a separate message whether or not it does the transport layer on the other hand ensures that the whole message arrives intact and in order overseeing both error control and flow control at the source to destination level computers often run several programs at the same time for this reason source to destination delivery means delivery not only from one computer to the next but also from a specific process on one computer to a specific process on the other so the transport layer header must therefore include a type of address called service point address in the osi model and port number or port address in the internet and tcp ip protocol suit a transport layer protocol can be either connectionless or connection oriented a connectionless transport layer treats each segment as an independent pocket and delivers it to the transport layer at the destination machine a connection oriented transport layer makes a connection with the transport layer at the destination machine first before delivering the packets after all the data is transferred the connection is terminated in the transport layer a message is normally divided into transmittable segments a connectionless protocol such as udp treats each segment separately a connection oriented protocol such as tcp sctp creates a linear relationship between the segments using sequence number like the data link layer the transport layer may be responsible for flow and error control now let's see and how our flow and error control at this layer is performed end to end rather than across a single link we'll see that one of the protocols um, are is not involved in the flow and error control which is well which will discuss uh, in future slides and there are the two other protocols that is tcp and sctp use sliding windows for flow control and acknowledgement system for error control now we uh, begin this uh, presentation by giving the rationale for the existence of transport layer that is the need for process to process delivery and uh, now we uh, will discuss the issues arising from this type of uh, delivery and we'll discuss the methods to handle them the internet model has three protocols at the transport layer one is udp and the other is tcp and sctp okay the data link layer is responsible for delivery of frames between two neighboring nodes over a link and this is called a node to node delivery the network layer is responsible for delivery of datagrams between two hosts and this is called host to host delivery communication on the internet is not defined as the exchange of data between two nodes or between two hosts real communication takes place between two processes that is application programs so we need process to process delivery at any moment several processes may be running on the source host and several on the destination host to complete the delivery we need a mechanism to deliver data from one of these process running on the source host to the corresponding process running on the destination host the transport layer is responsible for process to process delivery the delivery of a packet part of a message from one process to another two process communicate in a client relay server relationship and uh, we'll see the three types of deliveries and their domains although there are several ways uh, to achieve process to process communication the most common one is through the client server paradigm a process on the local host called a client needs service from a process usually on the remote host called a server both process have the same name that is client and server have the same name which we will see in this diagram a process on the local host called a client needs service from a process usually on the remote host called a server 
both process have the same name for example to get the day and time from a remote machine we need a daytime client process running on the local host and daytime server process running on the remote machine operating systems today are support both multi user and multi programming environments a remote computer can run several server programs at the same time just as local computers can run one or more client programs at the same time for communication we must define local host local process remote host and remote process whenever we need to deliver something to one specific destination among many we need an address at the data link layer we need a mac address to choose one node among several nodes if the connection is not point to point a frame in the data link layer needs to be needs a destination mac address for delivery and a source address for the next node's reply so at the network layer we need an ip address to choose one um, on host among millions a datagram in the network layer needs a destination ip address for delivery and a source ip address for the destination reply so at the transport layer we need a transport layer address called a port address to choose among multiple process running on a destination host the destination port number is needed for delivery the source port number is needed for the reply so in the internet model the port numbers are 16 bit integers between 0 and uh, 65535 the client program defines itself with a port number and uh, chosen randomly by the transport layer software running on the client host this is the fml port number so the server process must also define itself with a port number the port number however cannot be chosen randomly if the computer at the server uh, server side runs a server process and assigns a random number as the port number the process at the client side that wants to access that server and use its services uh, will not know the port number of course uh, one solution would be to send a special packet and request the port number of the specific service server and but this requires more overhead so the internet has decided to use universal port numbers for servers so these are called well known port numbers so there are some exceptions to this rule for example uh, there are clients that are assigned well known port numbers every client process knows the well known port number of the corresponding server process for example while the daytime clients process uh, can be an ephemeral ephemeral that is temporary port number 5200 52000 to identify itself the daytime server process must use the well known port number 13 now we'll see this concept here so it should be clear that um by now that uh, the ip address and port number play different role in selecting the final destination of the data so the destination ip address defines the host among the different hosts in the world after the host has been selected the port number defines one of the process on this particular host now we'll see the ianarh that is internet assigned uh, number of authority the iana has divided the port numbers into three range well known registered and dynamic the ports ranging from 0 to 1023 are assigned and controlled by iana these are known as well known ports and the ports ranging from 1024 to 49151 are not assigned or controlled by iana they can only be registered with iana to prevent duplication and these are called registered ports and the ports ranging from 49152 to 65535 are neither controlled nor registered they can be used by any process these are ephemeral ports now let's see what is mean by socket address and a process to process delivery needs to identify us ip address and the port number at each end of it uh, each end to make a connection the combination of ip address and uh, port number is called socket address the client socket address uh, defines the client process uniquely just as the server socket address defines the server process uniquely a transport layer protocol needs a pair of socket address the client socket address uh, and server socket address 
these four pieces of informations are part of ip header and the transport layer protocol header the ip header contains the ip addresses the udp or tcp header contains the port numbers the addressing mechanism allows uh, multiplexing and demultiplexing by the transport layer mm, at the sender site there may be several processes that need to send packets however there is only one transport layer protocol at any time and this is many to one relationship and requires multiplexing <coughs> the protocol accepts message from different processes differentiated by their assigned port numbers after adding the header the transport layer passes the packet to the network layer at the receiver site the relationship is one to many and requires multi demultiplexing the transport layer receives datagrams from the network layer after error checking and dropping of header the transport layer delivers each message to the appropriate process based on the port number a transport layer protocol can be either connectionless or connection oriented in a connectionless service the packet are sent uh, from one party to another with no need for connection or establishment or connection release the packet number are not numbered they may be delayed or lost or may arrive out of sequence there is no acknowledgement either and in a connection oriented service a connection is first established between the sender and the receiver data or transfer so at the end the connection is released and uh, the transport layer service can be reliable and unreliable if the application program needs reliability we use a tra reliable transport layer protocol by implementing flow and error control at the transport layer this means that a slower and more complex service on the other hand if the application program doesn't need reliability because it uh, uses its own flow and error control mechanism or it needs fast service or nature of the service doesn't demand flow and error control then an unreliable protocol can be used so in the internet there are three common different uh, transport layer protocols uh, as we have already mentioned that is udp is a connectionless and unreliable tcp and sctp are connection oriented and reliable and these three can respond to the demands of the application layer programs one question often comes to our mind that uh, if the data link layer is reliable and has flow and error control do we need this at the transport layer too so the answer is yes reliability at the data link layer is between two nodes that's all so we need reliability between two ends because the network layer is in the net net internet is unreliable uh, best for delivery we need to implement reliability at the transport layer so to understand that error control at the data link layer doesn't guarantee error control at the transport layer we'll uh, just take an example the window is character oriented instead of frame oriented we have to keep it in mind and with this uh, i will continue in the next module thank you